The final part of the cultivation experience is bed preparation. So what we've done here is tried to incorporate a number of different themes in, into the trial. So first of all, we're looking at a comparison between a coarse and a fine bed. Uh, now why are we doing this? Well, it's possible obviously the coarse of the bed, you, you obviously affect your soil to seed contact, which can affect your initial emergence and then can affect your initial canopy growth. There's obviously work being done that suggests there may be a, a you know effect on tuber number. Obviously, you know things like obviously last year it affected powdery scab. This year it may well affect common scab. There's a number of angles, so we're, we're looking at the whole lot, quite about all sort of yield and quality parameters of these trials. So what we did with the we created coarse bed. So again, we've gone for extremes to create a difference. So we created the coarse bed with a uni star set at 50 mil size and then at the other extreme we, we had a, 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 a uni web machine uh, both supplied by standards second year they've helped me out in terms of trials which I'm very grateful for uh, and, and they supplied a, 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 a uni web which is a 36 mil three three web machine create, creating the following so the next thing we looked at is obviously there's been an awful lot of talk about you know don't de-stone any deeper than you have to so again, I've put the 25 and 35 uh, centimetre comparison, at the, the, the depth that the stoner shares running at. And then again, because of the difference we got with the bed till last year in particular, we've gone and replicated all those with and without the bed till situation. Now, what had happened this year, you were getting such rapid drying going on this year with, with, with the soil that by the time you got to this stage, the chances of actually doing a lot of significant soil damage was a lot less than probably many other seasons we've ever seen. And quite as the re results really reflect that, in that you know you can see here all the treatments are pretty much giving you unimpeded rooting. The only thing you will notice is you can see some of these lines just rising up slightly before the others, and the ones that are generally rising up first are again where you're using the bed tiller. Uh, in, in, in that effect. So there's possibly a slight pan effect going on, but nothing in this field that's actually stopped the roots going going down. Possibly slightly lighter than the other field, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, this one. Um, so that's basically the story for, for the penetrometer readings. And here you can see two different line clusters. And here the bottom line cluster that's got emerged very slightly slower and grew slightly slower away are all the course treatments. So we have had a little bit of an initial delay, but basically, you know, by the middle of, yeah, some, somewhere before the end of June, all, them, all those lines have essentially merged. And as you can see from all the plots here, there's no difference in terms of canopy today. That emergence um, difference is probably down to uh, the soil to seed contact. Soil, yeah, soil to seed yeah. contact. Yeah. In this, then, this spring as well. And then, and then that's basically having an effect, you know, a little bit of effect from that on. Will that come through in terms of yield? Don't know. It's not huge. So my suspicion is it probably won't. Um, our, our standard de-stoning grade is, is 42 mil. It's just up in the middle between these two. And it's, it's, I've contemplated going slightly bigger, partly, partly for output and partly to stop finer soil slumping. One thing we picked up from the, these experiments with the uni start at the 50 mil grade, we have some quite unfriendly looking stone that some of that finishes up in the bed. Now that might have an effect on the, the quality of the, of the resulting crop in terms of the damage it does to it going up the harvester. Equally, it might damage the harvester. So that's something we'll take into account when we do the, do the yield digs. So we'll, we're, we're going to measure stone content in, in the ridge and, and what's there. Well, the speed of operation of it was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the incredible diff, you know, you can see the huge cost saving that the course has given. Now, because yeah, I, I mean, that, you know, six, six kilometres an hour whacking along, and basically, with or without the bed tiller, at the shallow depth, it was going the same speed. 
I mean, I think, you know, commercially, I think probably around about 27 was probably the, you know, the depth because of the amount of stone that we had to get rid of in, into the ridge. I think we probably needed just that bit deeper than the, than, than the 25. Um, and you can see that, you know, you can see going deeper with the course didn't actually make that much difference, didn't really slow it down at all. It's the course that was enabled, you know, the forward speed. Uh, whereas you can see the following, it really did proportionally slow it down an awful lot more. Um, but you know, with the fine machine, all that stone, and much smaller, well, that's quite a big stone really, but the, the uh, with the fine machine there was a considerably am larger amount of stone down the wheeling to, to the level that it would start causing problems to the to the planter in terms of pulling the stone back into the ridge. If the stone level wasn't consistent up the field, that could vary the depth of planting a certain amount. And not insignificant is the, the effect of the lines of stone left in the field after the potato crop that could have an effect on the following crop. All things you have to consider on rented land particularly. But the biggest difference to me was the, the speed of operation between the two was massively significant. It's really interesting to see the results from it. Yeah, and you know, a huge cost saving advantage to the, the course over the, over the following. So it'd be interesting to see what the yields are and, and what, what everything else is. And the one, the one other thing in trials last year that I found with the following in the year when we had a bit of a powdery scab, you know, in, in this area that really fine sieving uh, with, with a web machine, you know, really fine, you really, really gave that, you know, slumpy kind of bed and that significantly increased powdery scab. It also increased greens when it cracked, didn't it? Yeah. If we didn't have stone and it was just clod, I think I would be more inclined to go to the coarser grade because a clod in time will break it down, obviously a stone won't. Well, Matt said earlier, these costs are slightly different to, yeah. to Andrew's cost from the treatments down there, simply because it was basically a brand new fence and two brand new pieces of um, of equipment that yeah, were, was, were doing the job. Well, my Reiki Speedstar's 10 year old contractor pub and it is at least that. <laughs> so it's, it obviously costs less to run. Well, sort of my second machine, if you like. And again, all this is replicated, so you know we should get some really good, good results across the reps from this. Well, I mean, I think you know, I think the message is, don't think of it at 35, don't think of it at 25. You know, look at how much soil, but don't go any deeper than you need to create enough soil. Yeah, we, we for, work for on every field, for every situation, that's going to be different. Yeah, we, yeah. As normal practice, we tend to work from between 10 and 11 inch of of D stone bed. So not much more than, you tw than 25 centimetres, and in most cases that's adequate. Yeah.